Hi everybody, welcome to the seventh webinar in the series about power of attorney on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, which focuses on how to create care plans for the responsibilities owned by a medical and financial power of attorney agent. I'll answer the question, what is a care plan? Why do I need one? and offer steps to create a medical and financial care plan along with providing forms that you can use. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. I am a caregiving expert and advocate of 20 years who has served as a professional fiduciary for clients in the roles of agent under medical power of attorney, financial power of attorney, guardian, conservator, personal representative of the estate, and a trustee. I am not an attorney but I have many of the experiences that happen to people who work under power of attorney as an agent and family caregivers. Please like this channel, please follow my videos, and please comment so that other people can find these webinars and videos on my YouTube channel. Believe it or not, your participation makes a huge difference, and I appreciate everyone who comments, and I will respond to everyone who comments. So in this webinar, we're going to talk about creating a care plan that includes current and historical information so that you can manage all the day-to-day -day responsibilities of being an agent. Additionally, so that when medical or financial issues arise, you as that agent are going to be confident that your actions are making a difference, that you're making good decisions based on factual information and knowing what the principal, which is the legal name for the person who appointed you, would want. So the answer to the first question, <laughs> my nose is itchy today, what is a care plan? So a care plan is a document, actually two documents in this case, because there's one for medical and one for financial, that includes information as of the present date, and it goes back as far as possible with relevant information so that when you need this information, you have today's information and you have a history that you can go back to to see how things have evolved over time. Because if you are acting as an agent under power of attorney, you may do this for a year, five years, 10 years, and let me tell you, it's hard to remember all of those things that you did six months or a year ago or two years ago. So information in this care plan is also helpful if you ever have to get attorneys involved or other professionals involved because they can benefit from having all of this information. So let's kind of go through a list of things we're going to talk about. One is documenting information because of the question, well, how well do you remember? When did that happen? Many times we can't remember. I'm going to show you what is in the care plan that is going to be linked on the page that is below this video, so my care plan. Talk about creating a lifelong health history, talking about caregiving responsibilities that can be accepted by the agent or that can be implemented by people that the agent hires. Why it's important to know personal preferences and history, and then how do you be confident in all these decisions that you're gonna to have to make, whether they are medical or financial, so the first question is, how well can you recite from the top of your head your health history? Like, when was your last doctor appointment? What procedures have you had in the last five years or 10 years? Surgeries, vaccinations, what kind? When did you get them? What type of prescription medication do you take? When was the last time you filled your prescription? And then on the financial side, well, how well can you recite where all of your bank accounts are and how much money you have in them? And if you have investment accounts, where those are and how much money you have in them and your life insurance policies and the value of your home and all of that information. It can be a lot of information to try to remember. So on the medical side, simple questions, again, kind of like I posed, but do you have a list of vaccinations with the dates? Do you have all your records from your past doctor appointments when you saw the doctor, what the purpose of the appointment was, or at a minimum, have you set up online access to an online medical portal where you can go and search for all this information and download your health history and your medications and your past doctor appointments and all the other information, lab tests, everything. 
because sometimes medical records are only kept for seven years. If you change doctors, the old doctor may not send the new doctor the information. And so, you know, when we live a lifetime, it's easy for records to get lost. And it's really easy for us not to remember when we had a surgery, where we had a surgery. Most of the times we remember why we had it. But, you know, for example, I had my tonsils out when I was younger. I couldn't even tell you what hospital that I went to to go get my tonsils out. I know about how old I was, but that's about all I remember. So if you want to have a good history, it's up to you to download the documents off sites, to scan them, to keep them on a flash drive or a thumb drive or on your computer somewhere, back them up so you don't lose them. So current and past medical history is the information that helps doctors and other medical practitioners offer you good care because they need to know your H&P and that's called a history and a physical. If you have an incomplete H&P or a poor memory, really that can place your care at risk because they're having to make decisions based on assumptions that they're making, based on information that you think is right but you're not really sure is right. Do you really want to take that risk? I don't. So care plans also list a lot of other information. Again, go to the page linked below, print off the two care plans. You'll see all the information that you want to collect. But it also lists, do you know, do you have your legal documents completed? Who are the contact persons for your agents if you are not that person or if you are that person? Have you completed a most form? We talked about this in a prior webinar. Do you have your living will? So if you can create some kind of an online file system for this care plan and then for all the other documents that you can download or scan on a computer that you can maintain it, it's going to be a lot easier to keep track of this as the years go by. You can also keep track of things like receipts for prescriptions that you might need for your income taxes, test results for your blood work if you want to compare like, well, what was my cholesterol last year, what was my blood sugar last year, what was my, you know, some other measure, right? And all your other procedures. Again, if you want good care, believe it or not, you have to be the keeper of that information. The health system's not going to do it for you because sometimes their computer systems are not connected yet. They're working on it. But it's very important that you and your agent under power of attorney have really accurate information to present and share with medical professionals and financial professionals. You know, the answer, I don't know, or I cannot remember, is not going to be useful. One very practical use of the pages of a care plan once you complete this is when you attend medical appointments or you take somebody to a doctor appointment. Because you know this, at least once a year, they ask you to review your medical history, like your surgeries, your vaccinations, your health diagnosis, your prescriptions, your health insurance numbers, all of that. So if you create this in a care plan and you have a document that you can actually print off and take with you to the doctor appointment, or let's say your parent goes to the hospital and you have the power of attorney, print it off and take it with you to the hospital. So when they're asking you all these questions, instead of saying, I don't know, I don't remember, my mom doesn't remember, you have it on a piece of paper. Specific to prescriptions, right? When I'm asked like, what prescriptions am I taking? Because I take, you know, we can all take prescriptions, but then I take, I take a lot of vitamins, right? And supplements. They also want to know those. So I print it off on a piece of paper and I take it. And trust me, I don't rewrite it down on those pages. I give it to them with my forms and all. Like, here's my list of prescriptions. You can check it. You can update it. So doing all this while it takes a little bit of time up front, it's going to save you time later. And the other thing is, if the person you're caring for or you see multiple physicians, it can be possible that their electronic health record systems, although they should talk to each other, don't. So one prescription may prescribe, or one physician may prescribe a medication that another one doesn't see, and so they prescribe something, and it could be what if it's a similar medication and you're getting two blood pressure medications or you're getting a medication that doesn't work well with this medication and you're going to have side effects. So again, you've got to be the keeper and the communicator of all of this information. It's important to your health.
The more organized you become, the more time you will save in the end, right? And the better care you will receive. Care plans also contain information about future options for care, what you might want for care, end of life planning, all of that. So it can answer questions like, for example, when I need help in the home, what care agencies might be appropriate? Who might I consider? What happens if I'm diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease? What type of care do I want and where do I want to live? Am I willing to move into a care community or do I have the money to pay for care in my home? Now that can be $1,000 a month. It can be $25,000 a month if you are receiving 24-7 care in your home. I know that because I've done that for clients who had the ability to pay. Care plans can also talk about, well, what will I do when it's no longer safe for me to drive a car? What transportations are available? Is it Uber? Is there a senior van in my area where I live? Have you interviewed home care agencies to know what they offer? How many of you have visited assisted living communities so you know what they offer? While these may not be near-term decisions that you have to make, it's kind of good to know what's out there. You can go visit these places or interview them saying, you know what, I don't need this now, but I'm planning. I want to know what my options are. I want to know what the costs are. And the good thing about knowing what the costs are is, honestly, you're probably going to have sticker shock because Medicare or your secondary insurance doesn't pay for this. If you have long-term care insurance, Depending on the plan you selected, it might pay for this. But honestly, care costs can range into the thousands of dollars a month. And so let's say you're a younger agent for an older person. Think about all this. Plan. Save for yourself. Create your own care plan. Do all of this so that when the time comes, you're going to be prepared. You will plan. Now, the other positive about doing all this research is, it can be eye-opening, it can be shocking, but it can also be motivational from the perspective of, wow, this is freaking expensive. I guess I better take better care of my health so that I don't have more health problems, so that I don't need more care earlier or unnecessary surgeries or all of this other stuff. Now, that involves being proactive about your health, right? Going for your annual checkups, considering vaccinations, considering preventative treatment. Good health just doesn't fall on you from the sky. It just doesn't happen. It takes work because you're probably also exercising and eating well and doing other things that are good for your health, like self-care. Okay. So just as we talked about this medical care plan, Similar information exists on the financial side. So can you list all of your banks and your bank accounts and how many you have and how much money you have in them? Do you have a safety deposit box to keep records or do you have a safe in your house or a locked filing cabinet? Do you have a budget? Do you have a list of monthly bills on the vendor so you know what comes in and what goes out every month? What about passwords and logins for all of your online accounts if you have them? Do you have an investment strategy? Who's your financial planner? Who's your CPA? In your care plan, all of this information can be included so that if something happens to you and on the medical side, somebody has to make a decision for you, or if on the financial side, your mortgage check needs to be written in mail tomorrow, someone can do this for you. A financial care plan is also included in the course materials on my website, PamelaDWilson.com. The link below to the page for this Power of Attorney online course, 10 webinars, a lot of information that you can download. Those documents are copyrighted for use, the care plans are, but I'm giving you permission to use them. So how do you create this care plan and, and all the information in it? Well, I can tell you that I created it from my 20 years of experience managing care for clients. And all of the things that would come up, me and my staff would just keep adding more and more information to this care plan. And so it can become an eight to 10 page document. Plus, if you start keeping notes at the bottom with like the date, went to a doctor appointment, saw Dr. Jones for high blood pressure, received prescription, follow up appointment in three months. If you document all this stuff, your care plan can easily turn into a 
two, three, four, five hundred page document over the years, right? But the benefit is all that history is there. You don't have to try to remember it. It's all written down if you document. So document has multiple sections. You can always add more if you have things that come up that I don't have included. There again, there's a section at the bottom for ongoing notes so that you can remember. Now, what I can tell you is doctors love factual information and documentation. So for example, if the person that you're caring for becomes sick, when did they first get sick? What happened? Did they have a temperature? Uh, did their blood pressure go high? If they're diabetic, was their blood sugar high? Um, fever, stomach ache, body ache, had to go to sleep for six hours because we were so tired that we couldn't stay awake, vomiting, nausea, all that. The more factual information you can provide, the better the doctor can provide a good, accurate diagnosis. Or here's another reason for this care plan in the notes at the bottom. Let's say that your doctor prescribes a new medication. Do you, after you get this prescription filled and you're taking it, right? Do you notice any changes? Do you feel dizzy? Do you have pain in your legs or any other symptoms? It's important to pay attention to the little things as they very quickly can become big things because you may know this, but some blood pressure medications, some cholesterol medications, other medications, right? They can have very serious side effects like leg cramps or dizziness or maybe your mouth gets dry or you have pain. All medications are not perfect. They all have side effects. And so that's actually why it's important to ask your doctor about the side effects, the very general ones and the ones that happen to the one half of 1% of the population, just in case you are in that small percentage so that you can call your doctor's office and talk to the doctor or the nurse and say, you know what? I'm not sure I should be taking this. These are all the things that I'm experiencing. What do you want me to do? So keeping this daily note journal can be beneficial if there's changes in health, you're taking new medications, you're stopping a medication. Your well-being is worth the effort. Okay? Let's talk about some other reasons why you might want to have a care plan. Because you, you use this document as a living, breathing plan to establish and oversee care like we talked about. But if you are... Let's say that you're the principal, right? You're the person who hired a power of attorney and you and your agent should have access to this care plan. Now, if you're healthy, right, you may not have a lot of information to put in there, but I can tell you, remember being healthy is work. So it also may mean that you go to get an annual checkup and you go get your preventative care, maybe your mammogram screening and your colonoscopy and, you know, men get prostate checks, whatever we all need to get right. Or maybe you go get your teeth cleaned every six months. You have your blood work done once a year. You get vaccinated for the flu every fall or maybe something else, right? Keeping all of these little notes again shows your doctor that you're taking care of yourself. And again, it's a historical document so that if you don't remember and you forgot, you're like, oh my gosh, I was supposed to get my flu shot and I didn't. I need to go do that. Or, gosh, I missed my semi-annual dental checkup. I've got to get that scheduled, right? So it can help remind you of things also. And if you're healthy, you might think, man, I go to a lot of appointments, right? Well, you're doing that to stay healthy. If you have chronic health issues, you may have a lot more appointments and your goal also is to stay healthy. So it's important to keep track of this because very easily we can forget to do, you know, a health checkup or get our teeth cleaned or forget a mammogram or something else if we don't keep track of it. So this document that you take the time to create today is going to be relevant as the years pass into the future. I recommend creating the document, updating it as any information changes, Use it as a reminder, again, of appointments, of things that you need to schedule. Having this living care plan will really give you peace of mind that you're doing the best to take care of yourself, or it will remind you that, hmm, there are a few more things I need to do. So this care plan allows anyone of any age, because you don't have to be creating a power of attorney document to have this, right? You can create it for your children or for yourself because then it allows you to keep that medical history. 
you know, how many of us honestly can go back to our childhood? Like I mentioned before, I know I had my tonsils out. I know about how old I was. I have no idea where I had that done, right? Cannot even remember. And that happens to a lot of us. So the idea of this care plan is kind of like all-inclusive because it's, it's becoming more knowledgeable about your health and your well-being. And then for your agent, or if you are the agent, you're becoming knowledgeable about the health and well-being of somebody else. And you're also advocating and communicating maybe with healthcare professionals, financial planning professionals, nurses, insurance companies, all of that. So I have an extensive, extensive Caring for Aging Parents or Yourself webinar program. It's on my website, PamelaDWilson.com. I'll put the link to that below also, but it's under the heading of Support and More. And then Support Caring for Elderly Parents. It's extensive. It is basically my... I call it brain dump, right, of all the information, all the knowledge, the experience that I gained when I was a care manager, agent under power of attorney, personal rep of the estate, trustee, guardian, conservator. It's a lot of information, and it's free. So there's no reason not to go there to get it. Similar to acting as this agent under power of attorney, if you also become the care coordinator or the caregiver, that course gives you many opportunities to learn and having this care plan document, right, closes a lot of gaps. So let's just look at a list of other information that's included in the care plan and information that you'll want to collect. So again, it's contact information. Are you using healthcare agencies? Which doctors? Specialists? Do you have 10 doctors? Have all their information there. The office staff, the phone numbers, the addresses, everything your history related to your health insurance. Have you had the same health insurance for your entire life? Or do you have Medicare? Do you have something else? Dates of your hospitalization, dates of past medical procedures. Again, your appointments, your medications, your pharmacy information. And household providers and schedules. So do you have lawn care or snow care or a person that comes and does your home repairs? Do you go see a hairdresser? Do you have a housekeeper? Do you have CPAs, the vets that you take your pets to? I mean, we have so much information that we all have up here that is not written down anywhere that, you know, for a good bit of years, we remember it or we know where to go to look it up. But wouldn't it be nice to have it all in one place in one document? The answer is yes. So let's talk about personal preferences and history for a minute. There's a lot of details here. And the reason you want personal preferences is because let's say that the person you take care of, they get sick and they don't feel well, or maybe they are diagnosed with memory loss and you don't remember whether they like oatmeal or Captain Crunch or Raisin Bran or whatever. And I know it seems silly, but at the point that we are in the hospital, or in a nursing home, or in a care community, these little things matter. Like, you know, are their feet always cold? Do they wear slippers to bed at night? Do they take a bath or shower in the morning or the evening? What personal preferences does this person have so that they can be communicated to staff who are caring for them? Extremely, extremely important, right? So personal preferences, personal history, where did they go to school? Did they graduate? What are their hobbies? What do they like? Do they read books? Do they like music? If so, what books, what music? Were they members of professional organizations where they may have friends who would come visit them if they were in the hospital? What are their end-of-life wishes and plans for cremation and burial? Are they going to ever have to plan for Medicaid? We'll talk about all this more in a minute. But having all of this allows you to be a confident, practical, thorough decision maker, okay? Because at the time that care issues become a concern, you're going to be stressed. You're going to feel overwhelmed. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Having one place to go for everything, for all this information. Let me tell you, it's a game changer. It's a life changer. It relieves so much stress. Because this information is really valuable at the time that a medical procedure needs to be done. Or you got to give history to a doctor, like I talked about, you know, past hip or a knee replacement. Or maybe they had shoulder surgery. Or maybe they're allergic to 15 different kinds of medications. So 
all of these things. So as you're going through this care plan, there's more questions to ask yourself. Have you thought about, is it burial? Is it cremation? Do I want a service? Do I not want a service? Making all these plans in advance, believe it or not, can save you money because you know what? The cost of everything goes up every single year. Additionally, if there's ever concerns that you're going to run out of money, you can compile and create a list of information that's going to be required by your state Medicaid plan. Now, obviously, you've got to contact the state Medicaid plan to ask those questions to know what you need. But, you know, I'll tell you, it's it's things like copy of your birth certificate, your marriage license. If you were divorced, your divorce decree, your Medicare or your other insurance card, your Social Security card, other important documents. Do you have all these? Are they scanned somewhere in case you lose them? Are you keeping them in a safe place? If you don't have these, gather them in advance and put them in your safety deposit box or a safe in your home or a filing cabinet so that if anybody needs to find this information, they can find it, including the originals of your medical power of attorney, financial power of attorney, living will, will, or trust. Because after you pass away, your agent, your personal representative, your trustee, it's going to need to take a copy of this original and file it with the probate court. Only an original works. Copies don't always work. So make sure you know where these papers are and keep them safe. And I know that all of this can seem like, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. And now, Pamela, you're lumping all this other stuff on me, right? Well, you don't have to do it in one day. You can do it over a period of a couple of months or six months. But I'll tell you, once it's done, you're going to breathe a sigh of relief knowing that you're going to be prepared for all these situations, including emergencies and the unexpected. So your next step is to look below this video. Find the page where this webinar resides on my website. In that section, there's going to be links to PDF documents of the medical and the financial care plan. Every webinar that I do probably has maybe one link, a couple of links to the information I talk about in the webinar. Because honestly, there is never a better time like the present to focus a little bit on yourself, a little bit on the person that you are assigned to be the agent for, so that you can make a plan. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. I'm a caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker. 20 plus years of serving as a professional fiduciary in these roles as power of attorney, guardian, conservator, personal rep of the estate, and trustee. Please like my YouTube channel, follow these videos, and please do comment. If it's only just to say, hey, Pamela, thanks for the video. I appreciate it. Your comments allow other people to find these videos because you're participating. Your participation makes a difference for other people, no matter how small or how big. Thank you again for being here. I look forward to seeing you all again soon in another webinar or another video.